Right now at noon, deadly standoff in Dane County. What led to it and how many people are dead? Plus, homicide investigation in Madison. What we know about the arrested suspect. This is News 3 Now at Noon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Shane Hogan. We begin with continuing coverage from the town of Albion, where two people are dead after a standoff between law enforcement and an armed sus suspect. News 3 Now's Braden Ross is live in Albion this afternoon with the latest on the incident. Braden, what can you tell us at this time? Hi, Shane. Yeah, we are standing just off of Highway 51 here in the town of Albion. This is Ramsey Road behind me. You can see the sheriff's office still has this road blocked off. This is as close as we can get to that home where those two people were found dead early this morning. Now let's break down what we know so far about what happened here. So the situation actually started down in Dubuque County, Iowa, when sheriff's deputies were called to a house there around 7 p.m. last night. There they found one woman dead. They believe foul play was involved there. The two children that they say lived at that house in Iowa, a 13 year old and a five month old baby were nowhere to be found. Now shortly after that residents here in Albion were told to stay inside and lock their doors after an armed man and woman fled from police. That chase ended at a home here in the town of Albion where the two people were barricaded inside. Officials said one of those people is a person of interest in that Iowa murder. Now the standoff ended early this morning when Dane County Sheriff's deputies entered the home and found a man and woman dead. The man died of apparent suicide. Deputies also discovered the body of a 13 13 year old. Now we're not sure exactly where or how old, how they died and that five month old baby was dropped off at a random home in the area before that chase started. Now we are expecting more details at a press conference in just under an hour here. We're about to head down there and we will stream that on channel 3000.com so you can get the latest updates right as we're getting them as well. We'll of course have those updates tonight on our shows at four and five and six o'clock right here on News 3 Now. But for now reporting in Albion, Braden Ross, News 3 Now. All right, Brayden, thank you. To an update now on a deadly shooting last night in Madison. Police say a woman has been arrested in connection with this incident. For the latest, we go live to Catherine Merck, who's at the Madison Police Department. Catherine. Shane, we continue to learn more about last night's homicide each hour. Here's what we know as of this morning. Last night at 630, police received a call that a man had life threatening injuries at the 1900 block of Northport Drive. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. This morning, we now know that Tamar Brianna Beasley was booked into the Dane County Jail and she is charged with first degree intentional homicide related to this case. Now, last night I was at the scene until the late hours of the night and many neighbors told me they still had questions as to what transpired at that apartment complex where this had taken place. We're going to have answers from the Madison Police Department in the next half hour as they hold a press conference at 1230 and we're going to stream that live on channel 3000.com along with the other stories that Braden just told you about out in Albion. So make sure to stick with us there on channel 3000.com and also watch our coverage at four, five and six o'clock. Reporting live in downtown Madison, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now. All right, Catherine, thank you. With major developing stories throughout our viewing area, make sure you download the free Channel 3000 mobile app. That's where you can find these continuing updates that Catherine and Braden and the rest of the team will be providing throughout the day. You can find it by searching Channel 3000 in your app store. A judge in Waukesha will decide if one of the defendants who stabbed their classmate nearly a decade ago should be released from a mental institution. Morgan Geyser was 12 years old when she and Anissa Wire stabbed their friend. They claimed the reason for doing this was to appease the fictional character Slenderman. Both were found guilty of attempted homicide and sentenced to a mental health facility. Geyser wants to be granted conditional release, a psychologist testified that she believes Geyser still presents a risk to herself or others, but the defense argued that she is ready to be released since the conditional release would happen slowly. The hearing continues today. The family of OJ Simpson says the infamous athlete died yesterday. They say he died from prostate cancer. The former NFL star and broadcaster's athletic achievements brought him fame but they were eclipsed by his 1995 acquittal in the brutal killings of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman. He later lost a multi-million dollar wrongful death suit brought by the families of his ex-wife and Goldman. In 2007, police arrested him in Las Vegas on several felony charges including kidnapping and armed robbery. He went to jail and was released on parole nine years later. 
O.J. Simpson was 76 years old. Okay. Well, a rainy afternoon and night on the way. Kelly Slipka is out on the weather patio to tell us more. Hey, Kelly. Yeah, it is uh, dry for now. It's been dry throughout the morning hours, but uh, we are tracking some showers that are starting to creep a little bit closer and closer to the Madison area today. Nothing real heavy, but we are expecting some light showers. You can see it just uh, moving from the Adels uh, down uh, through Sauk City, seeing some of those showers moved out of Lone Rock now, headed to the uh, south. But you can see that it's uh, extended down to Prairie de Sac, starting to move into northwestern Dane County, probably in the Madison area within about 45 minutes or so. Also seeing some showers there in Dodgeville, Darlington, headed over into a Green County. Just a band, a very narrow band of some light showers that will be passing through. But there's more to come behind that. We'll continue to see some of these bands move on in from the north and west as a weak disturbance moves on in. As we look at our future track radar, you can see some of these showers a little bit more enhanced as we go through later today as the instability goes up a little bit. Nothing real heavy, but may see a brief moderate shower coming through. Also within about an hour and 40 minutes or so, you're probably going to hear the sirens go off. This is a uh, statewide tornado drill. This is Severe Weather uh, Awareness Week. This will be going off at 145. They'll do two of them. They'll do another one at 645. These are just tests for tornado warnings, but it's also a, a reminder of what you should do in case you get underneath one of these warnings. Obviously, uh, you want to take cover if you ever get under one of these warnings. And next week, we do have a first warn alert day for some severe weather. That'll be happening at Tuesday. Possible high winds, hail, and some of those isolated tornadoes as we go into next week. Just some showers this afternoon. No severe weather expected. Dry and windy tomorrow. Beautiful weekend headed away with temperatures approaching 70, if not into the 70s. Right now it's 61 in Madison, so not bad. 62 in Middleton, 63 uh, down in uh, Stoughton. 60 uh, right now we're looking at temperatures to uh, probably actually drop a little bit once that rain starts to uh, spread on into the area. And we'll talk more about the rain chances today, when it will end, and also the mild weather this weekend. More on that coming up. All right, Kelly, thank you. To news now from the Wisconsin State Supreme Court, Justice Ann Walsh Bradley announcing today that she will not run for another term on the court. In a statement, Bradley thanked the people of Wisconsin for electing her to three previous terms, calling it an honor of a lifetime. Last November, former Republican Attorney General Brad Schimmel announced his candidacy for the Wisconsin Supreme Court against Bradley in 2025. Bradley's term ends July 31st, 2025. Today, we'll hear from MMSD's new superintendent, Dr. Joe Gothard. Gothard will be speaking with members of the press later today. Before that, though, let's take a look at his track record. Gothard was named MMSD's next superintendent back in February. The Madison native and MMSD alum got his doctorate from Edgewood College. He currently serves on the school's board of trustees. He was previously a member of the Lincoln Elementary School staff. His latest role serving as the St. Paul Public Schools superintendent. Still ahead this afternoon, how Delta is changing, how passengers board its planes, plus the cost of a mailing letter could be going up soon, what the U.S. Postal Service is proposing. You're watching News 3 Now at noon, moving forward. Get the lowest prices now during the spring semi-annual sale at Furniture and Appliance Mart. Save up to $1,500 instantly. Get up to 60% off on overstock and clearance items. And 60 months special financing with no money down at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley. Why won't you? I want fresh air. <laughs> You need the experts. The home renewal experts at Belco will make your project a breeze with free installation on windows, siding, doors, and roofing. Plus, no interest for six years. Free installation won't last long. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for Belco. Thousands of our heroes face the difficult choice between keeping their heat and power on or facing homelessness. 21,000 Wisconsin veterans are living below the poverty line, many impacted by physical or mental health challenges. Wisconsin loses three veterans to suicide every week. Together, our mission is to provide all struggling Wisconsin veterans with a critical survival safety net that keeps them safely in their homes. You can make a real difference by providing a donation to the Wisconsin Heat and Housing for Heroes Initiative, with 95 cents of every dollar donated going directly to those right here in your community. Help by visiting www.
www.heatforheroes.org or by calling 1-800-891-9276. That's 800-891-9276. This famous wood fence from the show Home Improvement had to have boards replaced 13 times in only nine years. Our fences outlast wood three to one and are all backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. This month, save $1,000 on your project. Visit the website or call the number for your new fence today. You've probably heard by now, but Wanakee Remodeling has been transforming homes for the better part of half a century by installing materials that stand the test of time from a team of trusted home pros. Our design team delivers a turnkey experience for your interior or exterior remodeling project, leaving you with a home you love. At Wanakee Remodeling, we'll never stop improving. Right now, get a special window offer. Buy one window, get one 40% off plus special financing. Visit WanakeeRemodeling.com for more. Get the lowest prices now during the spring semi-annual sale at Ashley. We're cleaning house and everything is on sale. And save even more on closeouts. Plus special financing for 60 months with nothing down. Only at Ashley. The Labor Department's latest consumer price index report shows an increase of 3.5 percent in March compared to last year. That's the biggest spike in six months. The numbers showed gas prices spiked 1.7 percent compared to February, though grocery store prices were mostly unchanged from the previous month. The cost of mailing a letter could be going up again soon. The U.S. Postal Service wants to raise the price of a first-class forever stamp from 68 cents to 73 cents. If approved, the change would happen in July. Stamp prices last increased in January by two cents. And Delta is changing how passengers board its planes. Starting next month, travelers will be assigned boarding zones instead of groups labeled by names such as Sky Priority. The airline says the boarding order will not change. It's simply a re labeling that the company hopes will speed up the boarding process. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Carissa Lawson. At the noon hour, taking a look at the stocks. Dow is still down today. The NASDAQ is up 160 and the S&P up 11.87. Up next, Pam is watching today's ag prices and we're tracking your first warn forecast. Then later on Live at 4, the education crisis continues to rage here in Wisconsin. We'll look at the extent of the teacher shortage and how the state is responding. Win a hand-paid jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Corvette and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. What could our foam do for your home? Incredible comfort, no matter what the weather. Incredible savings, because your AC is going to run so much less. It even reduces outside noise and allergens. No matter what kind of cheap insulation you already have, our foam will go right over it. Incredible. And spring is the time for incredible deals. So we're matching the $1,200 tax credit with a $1,200 discount. USA Insulation. With dad's arthritis, he needs extra help around the house. So I called a grace. Yes, a grace. With their agent home service, he can stay at home. home. That's where I want to spend these months. <laughs> with hospice care from a grace, I can stay home with my dog and my grandkids and their laughter. laughter. I had no <laughs> idea laughter could be a part of my life again after Joe died. But through a grace, I found hope and healing. A grace, caring every step of the way. Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. We do the math, people. For $79, you get all this. That costs over $200 at Walmart, over $300 at LensCrafters, and over $200 at America's Best. When it comes to value, Stanton Optical is the top bird. With the best service, quality, and prices, Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. To help you remember, I made this cheer. The value. A, awesome value. L, lots of value. You get two pairs of free eye exam and anti-glare lenses for only $79. Win a hand-paid jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Corvette and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings, going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. It's Abbott Elementary Week, and we put Shirley Ross and Chris Perfetti to the test. National Spelling Bee Champ, Dan Shaw! 
We got this. I've lost already. Then the wheelchair poppy is pure motivation. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. How old are you? 99 plus. And he spent a lifetime doing something good. I'll tag along with this amazing local veteran as he reveals priceless life lessons and what we can all do to make his greatest wish come true. Tonight at 10. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Welcome back at noon. Time to check in with the Midwest Farm Reports. Pam Yonke. Hey, Pam. Hey, Shane. Yeah, trying to keep an eye on what's going on with the weather. I'm going down to campus. The uh, Wisconsin Association of Meat Processors is in town, and they're capitalizing on that beautiful state-of-the-art facility on the UW-Madison campus, the Meat Science Building, where they're learning about different handling techniques, uh, things like traceability, uh, also new processing techniques. So I'm going to go shadow them later this afternoon. North Carolina has become the seventh state now to identify highly pathogenic avian influenza in their dairy cattle. Their state veterinarian, Dr. Mike Mark Martin announced it yesterday. What's interesting is that uh, these animals show no clinical signs of being sick. They instead decided to be proactive and test the animals since they originated from a herd in Texas. So that's basically been the epicenter of where this high path avian influenza uh, impacting dairy started. A herd in Texas with cows that moved to New Mexico, Kansas, Idaho, then an additional load that ended up in Michigan, Ohio, and as well as now into Idaho also, and now North Carolina. So seven states total. Uh, Dr. Mike uh, Martin, the veterinarian, said that he believes there's got to be a lot more research and science behind some of the answers that they provide specifically for the dairy industry. He said they are noting that dairy producers should be watching those high-producing cows. If they start uh, not walking around as much, uh, they go off feed, milk production drops, consistency in the milk they produce changes, contact your local veterinarian right away and make sure that you're starting on major protocol for biosecurity. I know that a lot of our Wisconsin dairies uh, rely on Texas operations for, say, calf uh, ranch raising, uh, heifers, bred heifers coming up here. So make sure that you have got a biosecurity plan in place if that is your farm and communicate clearly with your veterinarian if you see something that's just not right. And uh, today was the World Ag Supply Demand Report. Not friendly, as you probably noticed on the numbers. Uh, they did not change Brazil or Argentina's uh, overall output, which we expected them to lower. That's part of the reason why we didn't see any positive reaction for corn beans and definitely not dairy. Barrel cheese today in Chicago down a penny and a quarter at 154 and three quarters. 40 pound block cheese down six at 151. Double A butter three and three quarter cents at 289 and a quarter per pound. I'll try to have some pictures for everybody on all the meat processing technology that our folks are sharing today down on campus. Shane, see you tomorrow morning and maybe share it with you then. All right, we're looking forward to it. We'll see you in the morning, Pam. Thanks. All right. All right, let's send things outside now. Kelly Slipka has got to check on your first warm weather. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Shane. Yeah, right now just uh, cloudy here out on the uh, patio, but uh, probably within the next half of an hour, we'll start to see some of those rain showers move into the uh, Madison area. They're fairly light. Uh, all due to a large storm system, really widespread rain over parts of the Ohio Valley. The eastern Great Lakes states, we've got the uh, cold front on the back side of it that's uh, producing some of these showers, also a little bit of energy uh, across Minnesota. That's what's going to enhance some of these showers as we go through the afternoon hours. And also behind this cold front, the winds are going to pick up right as you're headed home from work. About the rush hour, headed toward the dinner hour, could see some pretty gusty winds. All right, we are seeing some of these showers now from the Wisconsin Dells down towards Sauk City. Uh, just moving into the northwestern parts of Dane County. Also a band of showers there from east of Lone Rock through Dodgeville. Headed southbound, southeastbound. Black Earth seeing some of these showers. Mount Horb not far behind. Expecting that to move into the Iwanakee area and also DeForest here shortly. But uh, Middleton expecting that shower here probably within uh, less than a half of an hour. Also seeing some showers uh, in just east of Darlington. Headed on to the east. Um, light showers at that. But that's what we've got going through the afternoon. They'll be scattered in nature maybe lasting 15, 20 minutes before moving on. They may pick up in a little bit of intensity as the afternoon wears on, but as we get through the late evening hours toward midnight, the chances of rain do diminish, so things will be improving overnight as far as any kind of rain chances. Just cloudy right now. Temperatures in the low six, 60s expected today. That's above our average, which now is 55 degrees. So we do have the, the shower, some scattered showers this afternoon. That'll continue mainly through the evening hours tonight. Then the winds kick in. It'll be dry tomorrow, but it's going to be a windy day. 
On the cooler side, we're in the upper 50s, but it's going to be short lived. We're going to really rebound this weekend. Approaching 70 Saturday, likely to hit the 70s on Sunday. So, scattered showers. We'll see these bands, uh, light bands of rain moving through a little bit more intensity as we get into the afternoon. Nothing severe at all this afternoon, but maybe a moderate shower passing through. Can't rule out an isolated rumble of thunder. Temperatures will actually back off with some of this rain cooled air moving through the area. A little bit more activity continuing through the 10 o'clock hour, but by uh, 2, 3 o'clock, most of this down to our south and east. We'll actually see some sunshine tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a windy day and a little bit cooler as we're in the mid to upper 50s most of the day. The amounts of rain are going to vary a lot. If you get underneath one of these bands of rain, you may get a quick quarter to a half an inch. Most of us probably a tenth to a quarter of an inch at best. Now, as mentioned, we are expecting the winds to pick up as that front moves through. So between 4, 5, 6 o'clock, we could see some of these winds up to 20, 25 miles per hour. That's because that cold front coming through. And behind it, that northwest wind will usher in some cooler temperatures. Those winds should gradually come down a little bit, at least for a time this evening. And then we're talking about severe weather. It is severe weather awareness week. The tornado sirens will be going off here in less than a half of an hour. All of southern Wisconsin, this is Tuesday of next week. So this is a long ways off, but this is uh, the potential of producing high winds, hail, and also an isolated tornado. That's next Tuesday, so make sure you're aware of that. Make sure you're, you've got every, all the precautions ahead of into that storm system as it moves on in. It's got a lot of moisture coming in, a lot of warm air coming in. It's going to collide with the cooler air that we have here uh, next Tuesday, and that's what's uh, going to fuel some of these storms. And this could actually be in the morning hours, the way it looks right now as a warm front pushes through. Temperatures right now around 60, so we're probably peaking about where we're going to be for the rest of today simply because we do have some rain showers moving in that'll cool our temperatures down. It's only 54 right now where the rain is uh, falling right now in Sauk City. First warm forecast 59 tomorrow. It's going to be a windy day with maybe an isolated shower to the east in the morning hours. 68 Saturday, beautiful weekend, sunshine 70 on Sunday. We see a shower or thunderstorm Monday. The main threat is going to be Tuesday with the first warm alert day due to the potential of some severe weather Tuesday. Temperatures do back off a little bit going through next week. All right, Kelly, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Still to come on News 3 Now at noon, let's see what Howard's cooking up in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. It's Barbershop Quartet Day here in the Test Kitchen. And to celebrate, we have an old-fashioned ice cream parlor favorite that'll have you singing its praises. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Saving money with these hot deals at Menards. All prices after 11% rebate. Get to work with these men's performance work gloves. Just $2.49 a pair. Clean up with five packs of paper, lawn, and leaf bags for $1.99. Six packs of flowering annuals are just $1.99. And natural wood mulch is $1.69. These hot deals won't last long. Hurry in before time runs out. Sign up for Menards emails to get more hot deals. Plus the weekly flyer right to your inbox. Save big money at Menards. No two people are exactly alike. While I can make my coffee just right for me, I can't customize everything. Take health insurance, for example. Original Medicare is just basic coverage, and it's the same for everyone. It didn't cover all of my health care needs or provide all the benefits I wanted. That's why I called Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield about their Medicare Advantage plans. With one call, they helped me find a Medicare Advantage plan that's like my morning coffee, just right for me. I was able to find a Medicare Advantage plan with additional benefits like dental, vision, prescription drug coverage, and more. But I couldn't have gotten those additional benefits if I didn't call. I spoke to an Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield licensed insurance agent that listened to my needs and treated me like family. They helped me find a plan with all the benefits I need, and they can help you too. The call is free, and there's no obligation to enroll. If you just turned 65, recently moved, or lost coverage, you may be eligible for a plan today. Don't settle for basic coverage. Call now to find a plan with more benefits like dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. You know, with my old plan, I was missing out on some things I really needed. I heard that new plan options were available for 2024, so I called. I couldn't believe what they had to say. You might just be a little surprised yourself. They even helped me find a plan that lets me keep all of my doctors and specialists. If you're looking for more coverage that fits your needs and your budget, give Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield a call today. They'll help you find a plan that's right for you, just like you made it yourself. 
Call now. You may be eligible to enroll in a plan today, but you won't know unless you take action. Call 800-916-6140. That's 800-916-6140. 800-916-6140. Call now. So far this year, we've celebrated everything from New Year's Day to National Pizza Day. So when I found out that today was Barbershop Quartet Day, I thought it'd be fun to bring in a classic barbershop quartet to join us while we whip up an old-fashioned milkshake. Goodbye, my Coney Island baby. To make it, all we do is combine some vanilla ice cream with some milk, sugar, and a good amount of frozen strawberries. We'll give it a whirl, and once it's smooth, pour it into tall glasses. After fancying it up, with lots of whipped cream and fresh berries, it's ready to enjoy. That's all there is to it. And if you have an old-fashioned milkshake blender, all the better. So if you're craving an old-fashioned treat that'll bring back all sorts of memories, all you need to do is head over to our website and get a copy of what we call our Memory Lane Milkshake. It may sound simple, but the harmony of flavors is timeless. So goodbye. Farewell. So long forever. Bum, bum. Goodbye, my Coney Eye. 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 Do they sound amazing or what? I'm Howard with the Cameo Barbershop Quartet in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a nostalgic way for you to say, ooh, ooh, it's so good. Hey, that's my line. Here you go. All right, well, it's time to introduce you to our pet of the week. Dane County Humane Society would like you to meet a senior pup, Copper. This nine-year-old arrived at the shelter in mid-March. He's a pup who knows what he likes and what he really enjoys is going for walks. Copper walks very well on a leash. He also likes receiving pets and sometimes treats too. Copper is looking for a home with no small children. He is a special pup who would prefer to be the only pet so he can have his humans all to himself. Copper is looking for a family who will spoil him with companionship, walks, and love. Dan County Humane Society's Wildlife Center is expecting baby wildlife. So they're holding a virtual baby shower from April 13th through the 19th to raise awareness, funds, and much needed supplies in preparation of the thousands of baby wild animals that will be coming through their doors this summer. You can follow DCHS's Wildlife Center on Facebook each day to see how you can help make an impact on the lives of these tiled, tiny wild animals. Donations can be made on their website or dropped off at the shelter. Item donations from the Wildlife Center's wish list can be purchased from Mounds Pet Food Warehouse and on Amazon. To learn more about the event, visit giveshelter.org. Last week's pet, Gruff, the dog featured uh, there, you see, is still available. Meanwhile, String Cheese, the cat feature two weeks ago, has been adopted. Good news there. If you're interested in adopting Copper or checking out any other animals at Dane County Humane Society, you can head over to their website, giveshelter.org. All right, here's Kelly for a final check of the forecast. Yeah, Shane, we are looking at a few showers that'll be passing through now here this afternoon. They're going to be pretty scattered and generally light uh, passing through. Uh, amounts are going to be varying quite a bit, maybe upwards of a quarter of an inch. Most of us seen less amounts than that. That should clear out by tomorrow. We're a windy Friday for us. 59, 68, beautiful weekend, 76 on Sunday. We have a first warm alert day because of severe weather potential by Tuesday of next week. Could be kind of stormy early next week as we will see temperatures tail off into the 60s, even in the 50s later in the week. All right, Kelly, thank you. We'll see you back here on Live at 4.